Okay, today we're going to take some doodle notes that we're going to put into your notebook. So please add the following to your table of content. We're now going to put some items on pages 61, 62, and 63. These are all going to be dated October 25th. So for page 61, you're going to put evidence of climate change. For page 62, you're going to put more evidence of climate change. And page 63, you're going to have human activities, human activities. So this one, I'm going to have to use my Mobi to color in, so it won't be quite as much fun for me, but hopefully you'll take the time to kind of connect the dots between what we're talking about and the pictures and such that you're going to draw and color in on here. And it won't be that much, so for those of you that don't enjoy it as much, it, it should be an easy one for you. So you'll have to deal with me... Um, doing my best with my Mobi to be able to fill in this information. So the first thing here, I'm just going to kind of color in where it talks about evidence of global climate change. And just think about the fact that as we are um, looking at this information, we have been talking about climate change and all of those pieces of evidence that we have Again, it's not very easy, so be nice to me. It's not really made for coloring. So if I have evidence of global climate change, and when I scroll up, it's not going to be on here anymore. So I'm just going to stop with this part of it and not worry so much about the bottom part because again I'll have it in my notebook but I don't have to always have it here I like to give the little shadow effect obviously so get that colored in and again yours is gonna look so much better than mine and you can use whatever colors you like. I like the to use the uh, green-blue combo because it kind of reminds me of our planet. So one of the pieces of evidence that we talked about as we read for things the other day, we talked about how our sea levels are rising and the decline of sea ice. And so overall, global sea levels have risen 17 centimeters in the last 100 years. This is double the rise in the previous 100 years. And the size and thickness of the Arctic sea ice has decreased. So NASA data has shown that the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica have decreased. For example, in 1909, McCarty Glacier in Alaska, this was a picture of that. 2004, this is what it looked like. So if you kind of think about it, I have um, an, a couple of things that I'm going to have you look at later that are linked up here. And I'm going to give you those links, and I would like you to take some look at the different things that you can see. The climate time machine is interesting because you can kind of see how things have changed over time. And, and then the other one, you get to kind of see the changes in a different type of way. Then uh, the intensity of North Atlantic hurricanes. So I think. I think for this one, obviously there's a picture of a hurricane here. I think I'm going to put some like water drops, not beautiful ones or anything, but I'm just going to put some water drops so I could just kind of talk 
think about extreme weather events in this case, thinking in terms of more like storms of some type. Wow, those are really terrible. And then our changes in precipitation patterns. Our temperatures rise and more moisture evaporates. So as we look at this, you know, if if the temperatures are increasing, like I've been telling you they have, and like we saw in our graph, if the temperatures are rising, then it's going to heat up the water, those big pieces of water, also known as the ocean. More moisture is going to evaporate, or even the Great Lakes, same kind of thing. So that brings in more rain and snow. And then this is not spread evenly around the globe because we know different areas get different amounts. So some areas may get more precipitation and some may get less. Okay, now talking about the rise of global temperature, the number of record high temperatures has increased. Of course, I'm gonna do something with my thermometer over here. I'll make it pretty simple. I think I'll just put some yellow around the outside of it because I'm keeping it simple. And then I think I'll put some color in the thermometer up to the line because that's what I would do normally. Now the graph here should look pretty familiar because it average global temperature from 1880 to 2013. We talked too about how that 1880 is the time that globally we started keeping records. This one is in degrees Fahrenheit, and on our activity, I also talked about how the in Fahrenheit, it was around 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So instead of having the zero with the 0.5 increments like we had, this one starts at that 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So that would really be like the zero line, and then it does go by the 0.5 increments. So in this case, there was our zero, and you can see that change in those global temperatures over time. The next one, ocean acidification. Maybe put some waves here. Waves. Again, it's not easy. If you want to color some of them, you can. Oh. You don't have to color every one of them. I just think it kind of puts together in your mind about the fact that this is ocean acidification. So the acidity of the surface of the ocean water has increased, increased 30% since the Industrial Revolution in the early 1800s. The ocean, is absorbing. And I know yours looks slightly different, that's okay. More and more carbon dioxide every year. Now, if you do have questions, please feel free to uh, contact me. It will be a little difficult though for me to get back to you soon. So give me a little bit of time when it comes to that.
Now this one is the more evidence of global climate change. So we can color in that fact that it's more evidence of global climate change. More evidence. You know, I'm wishing I had some crayons. So an indicator of climate change is that increase in greenhouse gases like we've talked about. And carbon dioxide is a minor but really very important component of the atmosphere. CO2 is really good at holding heat because it's one of those greenhouse gases. And humans have increased Atmospheric CO2, capital C, capital O, subscript 2, concentration by more than a third since the Industrial Revolution. That's a pretty big increase, Industrial Revolution, which uh, began in the late 1700s to your early 1800s. It's about when that occurred. Now, before we graphed how we saw that temperature change, now look at the Mauna Loa Observatory's monthly average carbon dioxide. So Mauna Loa Observatory there in Hawaii, we're looking at these questions down below. So the Mauna Loa one, what pattern do you see in carbon dioxide levels measured at Hawaii's Mauna Loa Observatory from 1960 to 2015? So you probably should put in something like CO2 levels have steadily Risen from three hundred fifteen parts per million. And again, you know, you're using the data that you see on the graph to kind of indicate what's going on. So in this case, it would be about three hundred fifteen parts per million to almost. And up here can kind of go across to almost 400 parts per million from that 1960 about to, and it said that um, it was from 19, up here in this little area from 1960 to 2015. Oh, sorry, overshot it. So from 1960 to 2015. And then this one, our total green, US greenhouse gas emissions by economic sector in 2016. So you may want to color in all of the different sections, like this is agriculture, greenhouse gases there, 9%, maybe transportation, 
at 29%. It's one of our big ones. Electricity is also at 29%. We have industry is at 22%. And then this one, commercial and residential at 11%. That's really talking more about let's say like businesses, the buildings themselves and the homes that we live in. So in this case, it's saying what are the three sectors most responsible for greenhouse gas emissions in the US in 2016? So for that one, you could just put in like transportation because it's at 29%. You could then put in electricity because it's also at 29%. And then finally the industry because it's at 22%. Fossil fuel versus renewable resources. So it, put some color around this to kind of uh, separate it from the thing above. Not the best line I've ever drawn, but it is what it is. So fossil fuels are formed over millions of years from the fossils or remains. of dead animals and plants, buried under dirt and rock, and then the heat from inside the earth and the pressure from the dirt and the rock that's above changed the fossils into oil, natural gas, and coal. And keep in mind that it took millions of years to make fossil fuels. Millions of years to make these fossil fuels. We do call them non renewable, non renewable fuels, non renewable resources. And fossil fuels were formed during the time of the dinosaurs. So those things are from those dead plants, those dead animals. Renewable energy is from resources that are naturally replenished, those natural resources that are renewed at the same rate, like solar and wind. Using that renewable energy like those things will reduce the amount of greenhouse gases released. And then finally for page 63 for us, we're gonna look at the human activities. So human activities that contribute to an increase in global temperature. So we'll just color in where it says human activities. Human activities. And it, it's kind of surprising some of the things that are contributing. You really, I, I don't know, I guess some of the things just surprised me that they're actually contributing to an increase in our global temperature. So transportation, I, th I think we're all pretty well aware of the fact that transportation is a big one. Uh, transportation, because fossil fuels are used to power planes, cars, trucks, trains, and ships. And so then greenhouse gases are emitted when that fossil fuel is burnt. Then we have electricity. With electricity, fossil fuels again are used to create much of our electricity.
So we know here in Indiana, we get most of our electricity from the burning of coal. coal sorry. Electricity. Scroll down. Cement. I feel like I feel like I need to use a different color. Cement is mixed with gravel and sand and water to make concrete. Then concrete is used in buildings like schools and hospitals and to make roads. The chemical reaction chemical reaction used to create cement also creates a lot of carbon dioxide. And then the last one there, agriculture. Agriculture is really an important industry because that's what supplies us with food. But um, greenhouse gases are emitted from cows through the process of belching and farting, it releases methane. And then from their fertilizer, well, from the actual poo part, we get um, that we use on our farms we have nitrous oxide being given off. So then industry, industry are those where we have factories that burn the fossil fuels, release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, So some of them do that. And then deforestation. This is red grass I'm putting up here. Deforestation, kind of color my tree, is when all of the trees are cut down and there are fewer plants to absorb the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. in an area. So then that means that more carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere if there are fewer trees. And then the last part of it here, natural processes. We're not doing the greenhouse effect, so we can stop there. Um, the natural processes. There are actually natural things that happen that contribute to the global temperature rising. You know, we, we talked about how the greenhouse effect is a natural thing. So it kind of makes sense that there are natural processes that are kind of contributing to all of this. I think I'll just use a highlighter. Whew, maybe I should have done that earlier. They contribute to an increase in global temperature. So the first one is respiration. Respiration is going to be one of those that contributes to Oh, I'm making kind of pink. He's blowing out his breath. So respiration, animals, and people are animals, release carbon dioxide when they breathe. And the whole process of respiration is that where we breathe in the air, it goes into our lungs, it gets picked up by those blood cells and taken out to all the cells in our body. And then it returns with that carbon dioxide that um, is then we exhale it. So put 
exhale under this part of it because we're breathing out the carbon dioxide, we're breathing in the oxygen. Then we have our little worm here. Decomposition is the decaying organic material releases methane. Again, that methane, like we saw on the farm thing, which is a greenhouse gas. And then the last one here, volcanoes. Erupting volcanoes are actually releasing greenhouse gases into the air. And then solar radiation. Solar radiation. Again, not the best coloring devices on the planet. That's why I like to use my dot cam. So solar radiation. The sun has itself both stormy and quiet cycles. During those times when the sun is most active, more solar radiation is going to reach the earth. So once you get these finished, what you're going to do is you're going to glue them into your notebook on pages 61, 62, and 63. And then please make sure to look at the things in Canvas, the other activities that I want you to do. So thank you. And I'm going to figure out how I need to stop this. So you'll have to bear with me.